Hi Sarah, Mr. Chambers here, and I uh, just want to say thank you for giving me the chance to critique your work. Um, let's go through your portraits and then we'll go through your apples of gold um, assignment. First thing I want to do is I'm assuming this is on white paper, so let's adjust this to show that. And uh, let's see, I'm going to assume you have some darks in there. Okay. First thing I was going to say is on the angle of the lights, um, of the eyes I mean. So if you look at this, um, at the angle of the eyes, there's a couple of things going on here. If I draw a line across here, um, the angle is, of the eyes is a little bit different. So if I look at the eyes here on the photograph, you'll see that um, the angle is a little bit more, uh, not quite as horizontal as, as you have it. And the other thing that I think you want to see is, let me get rid of this line, is that the eyes have a little bit more, they're more open, where yours seem a little bit more squinty. Okay. And then, um, that's the one thing that jumped out at me as far as, um, the, the angle of the eyes. So let's, um, Okay. The next thing, uh, I think your drawing is great. I think you have a lot of really great proportions. I think the shape of the face looks really good. The big deal that I would, the big thing that jumps out at me is probably going to be the lighting. And so, um, what I'm going to do is just do some sketching on here. You have to ask yourself, where's the light coming from? And in this portrait, the light is coming from up here in this, this angle. It's coming from right down across to left. Okay, maybe even um, a little bit more above because if you look at the light on her cheek, it um, definitely has a bright light on her cheek. But what you have to ask yourself when you're working is say, as you're shading, always keep in mind, where's that light source? Okay, so in this case, with the light being in the upper right, um, you know that this part is kind of hidden from the light, right? So basically this whole area right here is all in, in shade per se because the eye is kind of like a um, like a cave. You have the, the forehead and then you have the eye socket like this. Um, you know the nose is over here but the eye is actually forgive my drawing with this mouse thing. Um, the eye is in here and it's in this cave and so when you have um, the light coming down this way it's not going to hit the eye socket or it's not going to hit the eyeball as much. So a lot of times what people do, looking at your photograph here, um, people see how the white see the eyes. In your mind you say, oh the eyes are white. You know, white in the iris color, right? Well, is that white? What is the value here on the cheek? Let's just say that value is a 1 you know, on the brightness of her cheek. Okay, Or even maybe it's a 2 because if this is a 1 on the flowers on a shirt, then this is probably a 2. That means the whites of the eyes, uh, right here, that's probably a 4 value on a scale from 1 to 9. And on the uh, brighter eye, that's more of a, um, that might be a 3, a number 3 value. So that's one thing, um, the main thing I would say about this portrait, is just think, where's the light coming from? And then shade accordingly. Uh, so when you look at the nose, um, you would draw the nose the same way. You say, okay, you know, this part is in the light and generally this part is in the shade, right? When you draw the mouth, same thing. This whole area right here, that's all in the shade, right? Because it's turned away from the light. And then, of course, on the cheek, which you already have, okay? So that's all in the shade. Um, and of course the whole neck, when you work on the neck, you know, think, okay, so all this is in shade right here. You see, so think in terms of light and shade, almost like a block. You know, if we had a block sitting on there, um, you know, a block like this. In fact, her face is kind of a, a shape like this, if this is the front of her face. Um, and let's see, you probably have it slightly turned towards you, so... I would say her head, if 
for the most part, that's the shape of it, right? And of course within that, you know, that block is kind of has a shape like this, right? So you have, here's the eye socket, that's in shade. Here's this side of the head is in shade. Um, the side of the head is in shade. See that? So think in terms of light and shade, and then you get a really nice sense of form. So let's um, let's look at your next work here. Okay, now we're looking at your next drawing. And again, a, a great start. A lot of great things happening on here. Beautiful shading. Um, the things that I would probably jump out, obviously they said, hey, please put both of your teeth in there. <laughs> I have that all the time with portraits. Um, a few things. One is, um, just when you draw in the eye, as you can see by my little sketch there, the um, the top lid, you know, if I draw a vertical line, whoops, trying to draw a vertical line, there you go, um, hanging down, the top lid overhangs the bottom lid a little bit. So what that does is it kind of creates um, a bit of shadow. Now the one thing that you've got going on here is you have a photograph that's lit by an on-camera flash, so that means the lighting is very straight on. You don't get a, um, the sense of shadow of light coming from above the viewer, so to speak. Um, and so the eyes tend to get flattened out. But um, what I was trying to draw there, if, if you have the top lid, and by the way, the top lid is always um, thicker than the bottom lid, um, there's going to be a shadow from the overhang. Okay? So, you know, you have this top lid here, and of course here's the eyelashes, which become kind of a group like this. But the top lid has um, a shadow, or cast a shadow on the white of the eye. Oh, that's just a little instruction there. Um, I think the nose looks good. The mouth, there's something a little bit not quite right with the mouth. And I think um, part of it is it looks like her teeth right here are touching the bottom lip, when actually the bottom lip needs to come out in front of the teeth. So um, just keep, be mindful of that as you work on that. Um, I think the mouth would be a little bit wider, not much, not as much as I'm showing here, but just a little bit wider. Um, don't be careful about emphasizing the smile lines so much. Look more at the shading, you know, like you have a little bit of shadow there from the cheeks, and then um, obviously a little bit of shadow from the um, chin. Um, let's see. When you're drawing, um, the other thing is draw the, don't let the side of the head come out too much. You want it to probably come in a little bit over here. And then the other thing is the, eye, the ears tend to match, um, that, no, you actually had that pretty good. Um, the ear basically, a quick lesson on ears, um, you have this, okay, and then you have this little fold like this, which kind of disappears at the bottom. This kind of comes in to a little loop right there, and then inside the ear you have that that um, hole, so to speak. But that's kind of pretty much the ear right there. Okay. Um, just be careful when you draw on the ear that you don't just uh, you know draw a little something like that, so it looks like a monkey ear or something like that. <laughs> so when you're drawing this ear on yours. Um, you know, you have this coming in like this, a little earlobe, and then you have uh, this coming here. And what you didn't do is you you need to bring this back in like that, so it looks more like that. And you know, generally in the portraits, you basically de-emphasize the ears. You know, you give them just enough attention so that they are there and they're in the right place but not so much attention that they're jumping out. So in this case, you know, if you brought her hair over the ear a little bit and, um, you know, I think if you shaded it a little bit more, then all of a sudden the focus goes back on her face, okay? Um, always make the white of the eyes a little darker than white, okay? Um, emphasize the top lid and the top eyelashes over the bottom ones. Um, let's see what else can I tell you. I know her eyebrows, she's got a nice, beautiful, rich, thick eyebrow, but be careful that 
the eyebrow stops right here. This all here, this shadow here, um, that doesn't help the portrait. That's just more of an indication of the side plan. So maybe that's an, a lesson right there is only put in what you think helps the portrait. If it doesn't help, that doesn't mean you have to include it. So if I was drawing somebody who's 80 years old, I don't include every wrinkle on their face. I try to get the, what is the main character of that face? And I get, I go after those things. Um, check the distance between the two eyes. That looks like it might be slightly wide. Um, maybe not, I have to just see. Um, get that top lid right here. And let's see. Um, the eyebrow is a little bit thicker. And they might have said, hey, you know, don't make her eyebrows so thick. That's up to you, but if it changes the look of her, then you definitely want to check that. The last thing I want to say is uh, you have the top of the head here. Make sure you get the whole skull in. This kind of, um, you want to make sure that when you someone looks at this, that there's a good sized cranium in there. Okay, um, I have a feeling that this goes up a little bit more like that. Um, forgive my drawing, it's really hard to draw with this mouse thing. Um, when you're drawing the neck muscle, the meat of the muscle is right here, and then it becomes a tendon. So basically a muscle has a shape like this. It's got the meat of it, and then it's got a tendon. And so whenever you draw anything, like when you're drawing someone's neck, you have the head like this. Oh boy, that's a bad drawing. And then you draw that neck, there's going to be a meat right along this section here. And then it gets thin here. So it's never, um, you'd never draw a neck with a straight line like that. So when you're drawing this, um, I think, um, let's see, you brought a hair up in front. But I think one thing that would help is if you shade this and that kind of makes the neck a little prettier. And same back here. Um, I know the flash is hitting in the front, but shade a little bit of that. So let's see what else we got here. The light seems to be slightly stronger on her right side, your left. So you could go ahead and add a little shading in this section right here like that. And I think that would give a little bit more form. So when you look at the whole head, go ahead and add shading so the light is slightly coming from the right. Okay, and more questions, just email me. So now we're going to look at the final portrait you sent me of Gianna. And I'm assuming this is on white paper, so I'm going to quickly lighten this up as well. And uh, let's see. You have some darks in there. Okay, um, we did talk about this already. And the main thing here was thinking, looking at the photograph here, that the light comes from up here and it's coming down. You can see that on the head. And look at this line right here. There's a there's kind of comes like this, and then it goes straight, and then there's a bend, right? Where on your drawing, you have this, you have that, and then there's no bend. It, it kind of continues as one even sweep. So what we need to do to capture Gianna's look is get this, and then get that bend that comes down trying to get my mouse in the right place using this tablet. Um, sorry about that. Let's see. So that kind of comes down like that. And then it wraps around a little bit. Okay. So, so we'll get that. Uh, check that out. Um, See, I think this looks pretty good. I think her hair, she got a little bit more forehead, about like that, and then it goes up. Um, make sure you get this angle here on the right side of the face. Slightly comes in, comes out. Let's see. Um, I think it's important to go ahead and have her shoulder a little higher. But that, um, you know what, that's up to you. You can bring it down like you do, and I think that's a real pretty dress you have on there. But be definite. Whenever you work, always work with a sense of um, deliberateness, with purpose. So with that, how does that translate into a drawing? It means that you, you shade, that you have good darks in there. 
um, that your strokes aren't creeping up to something, but you you analyze your drawing, you analyze your subject. I'm sorry, you analyze your subject, your photo, and before you start working with a pencil or a painting or, or whatever, um, you know what you're going to do. So when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, if the light is coming from in the upper left-hand corner here, like this. Well, then that tells me that everything about this, you know, if there's shadow right here on this side of her neck, well, then that means her dress is going to have shadow over here. And there's going to be a shadow on her um, dress as well, like this. And it means that her hair, all this hair over here, is going to be in shadow as well. So again, looking at the block example, um, this time you have a black like this. Whoops, probably a little bit more square. Um, top of the head. So this side of the black is all in shadow. And so if you have a neck on there like this, then that neck is in shadow. And you have her body, then this side of the body is in shadow as well. That makes sense? So always think in terms of where is the light coming from. And of course, you can break that block down into even more shapes and say, okay, you know, I have uh, the front of her face is getting in shadow. Okay, and then I have um, two eye sockets. And they're in shadow. And you create the form. That's where you get the sense of form. So when you're looking at your drawing here, um, this eye socket is all in shadow because the light is not able to reach it quite as much. So this is all in shadow right here. And same with the other eye socket. This is all in shadow. Okay. The other thing is, when you see something coming from one eye, it usually means it wraps around, comes down on the other side. So if you see one eyelid go up, follow it across to the other eyelid. And see how it connects. That makes sense. In other words, when you're looking here, let me shift the color. When you shift here and you see this angle, right? See how it wraps around over to this angle. See how they are connected? And see how this goes straight. Well, if you continue it on, it's straight over here too. And see how this, uh, the outside lower of the eye, it also continues. And it's that same angle over on the other side. Not everybody's eyes are symmetrical like that. But there is oftentimes a continuity. You know, when you look at the eyebrows and you follow this over here and you wrap over here like this, that bone is going to be going down over on the other side. Um, you know, when you see the cheekbone right here, well then, chances are it's over here too. You know, if you see a little thing of the jawline over there, it, well, it's a little hidden here, but it is under there. That makes sense? Um, same with the mouth. If you see uh, this over here, chances are it's over here as well. But again, remember I mentioned on the other portrait, always minimize the shadows of the left line. Now one thing, uh, just one more thing about those cheeks. Right now you have a straight line right here. Why is that not working right? Let's see. It should. I'm trying to draw. Okay. I guess it wants me to pick a color. Flick it too often. So getting back here. You have a straight line right here. It's not straight. If you look over here, there's a, a curvature to it. See that curve? There's a curve as opposed to a straight line. Um, we talked about the lips. And I'll draw down here in this picture. On the lips, you have uh, the top lip like this. And then you have a bottom lip and then you have underneath the lip and then you have the chin okay so the top lip is like this and then the nose well the top lip if the light is coming down this way that's in shade right and then the bottom lip is in light but then underneath that bottom lip it's in shade because why it's turned away from the light and then what did we say before we also said anything inside this little cave in other words the mouth you know you have the mouth and you have the lip up here and then you have the bottom lip here. Everything inside this cave here is what? 
it's inside a cave and so it can't possibly be as light as something that's out here outside the cave. That makes sense? So when you look over here and you, I'm going to point to it, you look at her teeth, what value is that? It's a very low value, it's probably like a number four on a scale of one to ten or one to nine. You know if you look at the white of her shirt, um, right here, that's the number one value and let's just say the number two value is right here also on a shirt. Her cheek is what a three value. Wow, her mouth is down to number four. And the same with the white of her eyes as well. So that's it on the three portraits. Let's look at your apple paintings real quick. Actually, you know what? I'll do a separate recording for that. Um, no, I won't. I'm just going to continue and keep it simple that way. Now, it's 20 minutes. I am going to go ahead and give you a separate on that. Okay, that's 20 minutes on this, on these. Um, I know it was kind of long. It's longer than I expected, but I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, my email address is studio at timothychambers.com, and I'll be happy to help you. Okay, I'll right, talk to you later.